usually made is a large fly that, or a pattern that's used in Ireland for the large mayfly fly that comes off in the lochs and the lakes. And this is a, a CDC wing version that I tie. And uh, it works extremely well. And it's certainly worth tying in smaller sizes as well. So this is my experiment for this summer, or this spring, sorry, to tie some of these and see how they do. Now it's quite simple to tie. Now this is a size 16. It's just a barbless dry fly hook. The thread I'm going to be using. This is a uni thread AO and light olive. Now we simply start with thread at the eye, take it down round about halfway and then remove the base piece. Bring it up, say halfway again, so at this point no, can I give you a point for your wing. The wing is just a brown olive CDC. Now you will, these feathers naturally have a curve. So you're looking for the curves to come away from one another. It's quite simple to tie on, just, I usually just pull the fibres in and hold them. Make sure the tips are lined up. It's there. Don't want the wing, well as long as the wing as you want. Now I'm looking round right about the shank length, tied forward to the eye. Just a pinch and look through, two or three turns down, lift it up. Two or three turns in front, which basically puts a, builds the thread up and pushes the, the wing up into there. Make sure the, the split. Now the CDC fibre are, is going to mix with your hackle, so that is part of the, the mix to it. And then bring the thread to the back. And what we're going to do here is just put a small tapered cut in, which will give us a tapered body when we wind over it. I'll help anyway. And then we wind, as I say, continuing winding down the shank until just before the bend, ready for our tail. We quite look at our wing. There we are. You can see, not too heavily dressed, just enough. Now, in the original Mosley May, it's pheasant tail fibres, brown pheasant tail. Now, I'm just going to use a brown olive cock fibre. Looking round about a good half a dozen fibres, just line them up, just bring them 90 degrees from the stem. This will line up the ends and you can tear them away. Length, you're looking round about the length of the shank or the hook. Just offer it to the side, come round. Now, this turn thread will lift it onto the top, and that turn of thread is onto the bare hook as well. Keep a hold of the ends and bring the thread underneath, and using that turn, just allow basically the fibres to be lifted and then you want to turn on top so to lock it in. You'll see how it sits. I mean that's good, nice. And the reason for the number is that have, when you're tying traditional uh, dry flies you always compensate it for losing a couple and the fish really don't, don't count the, the tail fibres. So anyway Trim away the ends. Just tidy that up. Now your body length is around about two thirds. Now the color, the colors, the mix or the blends of these hackles, which you can see in the original fly, we've got a dark olive, which is represented by the basically this the olive CDC. We've got a, a medium olive and a pink. Now you can buy dubbing the same. This is the call spectrumized dubbing. You can see pink is in most of the dubbing. You'll see it there. There's a tiny bit of pink. Now, in nature, it seems to work extremely well. And the blend in the, the hackle and then the blend of the dubbing will work together. Now, you could, this is just ra like a rabbit dubbing. It has, it's even got this, this color. This is dark olive, as class does, even though it's quite light. You'll see like blue a yellow, a yellow olive anyway, a pink, all blended together. Now I'm just going to lightly dub it onto the thread. This dubbing came from America. Now I would hate to pronounce it wrong, but anyway, Kuzi and Nastasi, I think it's pronounced. I could be wrong, you'll keep me right, I'm sure. There we are, spectrumized furs. So and that was a pale olive and you can see that's the one I'm using. 
There's this, there's the dark olive. Now I'm hoping this is going to represent any spring olives and stuff that's coming off, and I'm sure it will. Two ninety five. That was a while ago. I'm not sure where it is now. But anyway, I'm just going to slide it up, stretch it out, get the body thickness you want. You can always turn the device a wee quick look, and then work your way up nice and tight. Now you could use a different colour thread as well, which would darken it. You could use a dark olive, or even a yellow or whatever. And there we are. Yeah, I'm only going to use two hackles. This is a... I'm actually using a sort of nature here. This is a... I'll show you the name of the cape. Right, there's a cape there. Now this was a medium grey done. Okay, it's a Hebert Minor. Now, I've dyed it yellow. Now as you can see it's very, it's very olive like yellow olive, cracking colour. It's you mixing or using natural coloured fibres and then adding another colour to get that blend. And it's a nice feather. And a smaller one in that, got two or three here for different sizes. That's fine. Just bear some of the fibre away or take some of the fibres off to bear, show the stem. Catch at the back, a couple of turns just to hold. And this is the pink, this salmon pink colour. Uh, the camera's struggling a bit with it because it is a bit bright, <laughs> but it works extremely well. You just want smaller feathers. Now, this is just a cheap cape that I have, I dyed. Now, what the colour is here, if you're using a vineyard fluorescent red, what you'll get when you first throw in, I used a couple of capes, and it's just only a, like a, say, a fifth or a teaspoon, you'll get this bright colour, this one. It's very orangey like. I'm trying to come back here. Um, it's amazing colour like. Uh, and once that's dyed, then you, you're left with a pink stain, and then you throw in the other part of the cape, and this is what you get. Now, I wasn't caring about the size of these feathers. Because I was tying big mayflies, so I was wanting these anyway. There's not many small feathers, but they're enough for me to experiment with. I'm just going to get a smaller feather, that seems a wee bit big. Now, I'm only going to get a, some, about a dozen flies out of this, but it's going to be enough to try. Now, take away the fluff. So I'm in. Now, the, the, this hackle's like two or three turns further down. And bring the thread to the front. I'm just going to put a wee bit of wax on my thread and then tidy up this area. Trim away the waste. Now, the first turn or so is going to be the you use the olive at the back. It's a full turn, then I come through. With another turn, lift up. Get that turn right under the in front of the wing. And then with another one. Let's do it, see how many we're doing. Just going to bring it up. Get the thread beside it. Make sure it's tied in. Nice and tight. And we can trim away the waist. And any fibres going forward to the eye, we can basically take these out. Now I'm going to have to use my hackle pliers. Now these are very small and lightweight hackle pliers. So the reason I'm using it, normally I'd tie by hand, but I want to be able to see where I'm going here. And that gives me just a slight extension. So when I full turn at the back, so that's the full turn there. And as I come round, I'll go to the front. And again, I want a full turn in front. Bring it up against the thread again, tie it in. Now, I'm just going to make sure I've got three or four turns in there before I do anything. Wrap the thread, so I'm just going to bring the hackle back round. Now what I'm going to do here is just to be quite look to turn this, because I could fold this back. Anything that's going forward, I could draw back, tidy up this area, tuck in the hackle so that it doesn't get pulled out. 
turn that away, turn away that small fibre there. Now, what I'm going to do here is just put a wee tiny bit of varnish on my thread. And then, flat finish. And there we are. Now, you can leave the fly the way it is just now. I'm just going to mix up these fibres because they are all over. You could bring a brush through and this will bring all the fibres in line. Because as you wind a, a hackle it will twist. And you're probably wondering why I'm doing that over varnished. But the, the turns of thread it's a, are sort of tight. And uh, they'll be sealed so I'll varnish it again so don't worry too much. And there we are. Now, you see that's just a basic fly as it is now. What normally you can do... Uh, Let's get your velcro. Well, I'm using this velcro anyway. Just bringing, putting a, splitting these fibres evenly either side of the body. So that I get like a, a flatter profile. You can pull them, so you can pull them up like that. Now that would hold to give you, so it sits nice and flat and to me presents itself more natural like to the fish. Or you can encourage it to stay there, so it never comes down. You can get some resin, and all you do is just get a light resin. Set it on that. Set it. Should do it. And obviously bring back down the fibres that you've flattened. Nice wee look. That looks okay. Oh present itself well.